I like the most maybe about this 4D thinking frame is, is that it embodies a kind of a, a yes and approach uh, that, that we see a lot of in this, in this new view space is, I think it comes from improv, but they say to, to meet something with a yes and, and I think that really uh, is true of the story here. Um, I, I learned about the 3Ds from Ivan Puppleti. Um, I think Ivan heard about them in the U.S. Air Force. In the U.S. Air Force, they say, don't do anything dumb, dangerous, or different um, in a militaristic kind of way. Uh, later, I think those evolved into, uh, if you encounter anything dumb, dangerous, or different you can't resolve, then report it to your senior. Um, Ivan, I believe, took that from the U.S. Uh, Air Force and brought it into the U.S. Forest Service Aviation Wing, and and really applied the sort of safety to thinking to it when he used them proactively and said, tell me about when you feel something is 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 dumb or dangerous or different. Um, let's start a dialogue about that. So when I heard Ivan present on that and was thinking about uh, what my clients were struggling with and, and what they were currently doing, I thought, you know, if we just add uh, another D dimension uh, difficulty, for industrial type operations, that this is a really handy tool. It's an excellent way to to repurpose a, a worker interface, a, a, a shop floor discussion with the workforce. And it has been that ever since. Well, the word dumb um, could, could be misused. Uh, we concern is that it may be misused, but uh, what we're really talking about there is sense making how people make sense of things um a lot of the older folks older older operational leaders that i get to speak to uh miss uh the days of common sense um so we can shift that conversation and talk about sense making that with uh, some a contemporary leadership approach we we care about how people make sense of things and when we inquire about tell me tell me something that feels dumb to you uh, we're saying, tell me something that doesn't make sense, something that doesn't make sense about the how we do work around here. Um, I think what it helps do, as they all do, is lower the threshold on, in, on what's worth talking about. We don't want people um, uh, ex necessarily accepting things for what is or just making sense of things their own way if it's if it's something that can be corrected. So I think by regularly asking what doesn't make sense, uh, let's talk about anything that doesn't make sense to you. Um, we're really making it okay to to create a teaching and learning environment where people are free to speak up and ask and um, get answers, uh, get clarification. Um, so that's what I think they really do. The, the dumb question really opens up a dialogue with a worker's immediate leader um, about how work makes sense. Dangerous uh, is so important. Um, I think for us to talk about, paradoxically, maybe surprisingly, um, for a safety conversation. But um, what a lot of my clients, what I learned from a lot of my clients is that um, is that our day to day pursuit of safety is it gets really caught up in in outcomes. So injury outcomes, quite often relatively minor injury outcomes. Um, and we end up processing those as as claims. Um, and I think by by making routine or making common the dangerous question, we're keeping a discussion about risk alive. We're bringing the conversation back to people's perception of risk and danger uh, and, and really wanting to hear their thoughts on that and, and be open uh, to reports of that. Um, and it just brings, I think, safety, the pra our practice of safety back to, to focus a little more on critical risk where it ought to and, and a little less on where it's migrated to, which is uh cuts and sprains difficult um uh this was the um this was the uh industrial d the d we added to the three d's for industrial operations um i think when leaders open up uh reduce lower the threshold and open up a conversation about difficulty in the work what is a task that's difficult to do or, or what is an outcome that's difficult to achieve or work that's difficult to do well um what we might be opening up there is is a a, a rich conversation about um perhaps technical learning um competency and and uh and um 
you know, the need for other training, uh, instruction perhaps on the work. But again, a difficulty is a really important uh, piece, I think, to add to industrial operations because uh, oftentimes, uh, particularly uh, sort of beyond halfway through a task, if a task uh, in its last half is showing to be a little bit more difficult than expected, the tendency to complete and to get the work done is to disregard any warning signs that come with that increasing difficulty and just focus on a little extra effort to get through to the finish line. And this is very concerning, uh, uh, that, that ability to say stop or that ability to pause. Uh, it's really important that we trigger those abilities with a discussion when work is particularly difficult. Different differences about change, um, you know, and I think I think it's the 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 diff the word different to me uh, dovetails over, you know, into the aspects of asking these questions that 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 really align well with a contemporary view of leadership and leadership skill sets. Um, I I I kind of um, have learned from the. Uh, Cotter at Harvard when he says the purpose of leadership is to navigate change. And when we ask the difficult or the different, sorry, question, we're inquiring about change. Um, we need, I think operational leaders need all of the eyes and ears and, and senses of their people working for them all the time. And, and contemporary leaders really need to be sure that um, there's no impediments to the, to the workforce sharing that information. And so certainly having all that experience and eyes and ears out there uh, noticing change and, and feeling comfortable reporting anything that's different uh, is a really important aspect. Um, I use the example, um, you know, to, to, to disregard a subtle change without daylighting it and paying some attention to it. If there's a, a puddle below a piece of mobile equipment, is that just water? Is it oil or hydraulic or brake fluid? Um, is it usual? Is it not? And so an inquiry into difference um, really uh, opens up a lot of operational learning. When I'm talking to organizations about the four Ds, I always stress that it's really just a conversation starter. We're inquiring about uh, a sort of a package of things, a set of things that represent uh, different forms of operational rub point. Um, having to have a conversation that touches upon each of them uh, is not particularly important. Um, categorizing the feedback we get and what we learn, uh, trying to categorize what we learn too strictly into one of the quadrants, one of the Ds, is is really not not the goal here either. In fact, once you really start having rich 4D conversations, you'll find that a lot of the information that comes to light could, could be framed into, into a couple of different Ds. So what it's really about is the, is the leadership exercise of going out with the right mindset and, and asking, not telling, um, humbly inquiring with people that do the work about what are these operational rub points. And, and each D just represents the kind of thing we're asking about. They could be used individually. They could target targeted specifically when starting a conversation. But um, when they're asked together, I think they represent um, maybe the four cardinal points, perhaps, of of just these operational rub points that that people face in their day to day. And they give that frontline leader an opportunity. They give the organization an opportunity to. Um, smooth out those rub points, to learn from those that are expert in the work, uh, to solicit possible solutions from those that are expert in the work, and to improve the experience of work for those that are doing it for us every day.